Welcome back to Water Quality in the Pacific Northwest. Uh, today we're going to cover, uh, we're going to continue to cover one of our five lectures on the oceans. We have a set of five lectures uh, talking about the oceans and we've talked about acidification, we've talked about coral reefs, we've talked about mangroves, we've talked about marine pollution, and today we're going to wrap up uh, talking about the oceans specifically uh, with talking about plastic pollution. Uh, pollution of the ocean with plastics has become a very hot topic in recent years and it is a major problem. Some people uh, that fish in the ocean and regularly use the ocean are very aware of plastic pollution. Uh, here we are in Southeast Asia and here you have a boat and uh, the sea is literally covered with used plastic. And this is not good for humans, this is not good for sea animals, it's a major problem. Yet humans continue to put more and more plastic in the oceans. So today we'd like to take a look at the uh, marine plastic, uh, or the marine plastic problem. Uh, marine plastic debris is a pressing environmental challenge. There are two common sources of plastic pollution, and you, as you would suspect, one is land-based pollution or land-based plastics, plastics manufactured on the land and somehow they leave the land and enter the ocean. And the other is ocean-based plastics or plastics that are uh, dumped at sea uh, by ships, either intentionally or by accident. So if we take a look at our land-based plastics, uh, the plastics include plastic litter from beachgoers. People go into the beach leaving plastic on the, on the beach and it can eventually enter the ocean. Uh, plastic debris that was on land that has been blown into the ocean. And then plastic debris that has washed into the ocean through maybe stormwater drains, runoff, and other ways it gets into rivers. A couple lectures ago we talked about coral reefs. Uh, here's an example of plastics ending up on or in coral reefs. Definitely a form of pollution. It's not good for the corals and uh, you can see what a disaster this could be eventually, uh, eventually become if enough plastic uh, got onto our coral reefs or some of our other ocean-based biomes that are very valuable. Here's a beach on the Hawaii coast. We think of Hawaii as having pristine beaches, yet there are some beaches in Hawaii that are basically littered with plastic and they have to be cleaned up by humans on a regular basis. Definitely this is not your idea of going to Hawaii and enjoying the beach. Here's some uh, plastic containers that are at the bottom of the ocean. Uh, definitely a form of pollution. It interferes with animals. Then we have ocean-based plastics, and they include things like garbage deposited at sea by ships and boats. And some of this garbage um, could be fishing debris, uh, discarded fishing lines. Remember, we have a huge fishing fleet on this planet, and a lot of times uh, lines are discarded or they're lost. So that would include nets and fishing gear. And most of these things are made of plastic and uh, they become major problems. Again, we go back to a place on the Hawaii coastline. Look at all the debris, plastics. Needs to be cleaned up, but plastics continually wash upon the coast. Uh, there are more severe situations in, than this ugly looking beach on the Hawaii coastline. We can go to Southeast Asia, where a lot of our plastics are lost at sea. Uh, this is a picture of the Philippine coastline. Here you have fishermen in the picture going about their regular business in the ocean, yet they have to wade through a plastic debris field. So collectively, uh, scientists believe that the breakdown of plastics uh, that hit the ocean, uh, about 80% of them originate from the land and about 28 and then about 20 percent of the plastics are from ships in the ocean. 
we can kind of quantify uh, how much plastic is in the ocean. And of course, the amount of plastic in the ocean gets bigger every year. It's believed that there are somewhere, there are about five and a quarter trillion particles of plastic floating around in our oceans today. We add 10 to 20 million tons of plastic to the ocean every year. So this plastic problem gets bigger and bigger and bigger because plastics are, are we consider them inert. They do compose, decompose over time, but their decomposition rate is so slow, we never really see them go away in a human's lifetime. So a lot of people that depend on the ocean for their livelihood or for transportation basically are confronted with a sea of plastic. Here we have a guy going through uh, a coastal ocean uh, on his little boat, and uh, this is no fun. Think of the blue sea, not at all. Waste bed of plastic. Now economically, we can put a quantity of dollars that it actually costs world economy every year. Uh, it's estimated that about 13 billion dollars in losses per year are associated with the negative impacts plastic have on the marine ecosystem. This would include everything all the way up the food chain. We know that humans contribute a lot of plastic to the ocean every year the main viaduct by which plastics get to the ocean is through rivers. Rivers contribute over two million tons of plastics to the ocean every year. And uh, we know that most of the rivers that are the large quantity of plastics that's contributed to rivers uh, comes out of large rivers in Southeast Asia. 17 of the 20 uh, top plastic polluting rivers are in Asia. And it's estimated that Asian rivers contribute over two-thirds of all the river-based plastics to the oceans. And you can see all kinds of pictures where rivers are basically overrun with plastic. Here's a creek in the city of Manila. It's filled with plastics in Manila. Definitely not a good aquatic ecosystem. It doesn't produce a lot of fish because there's not a lot of light that gets through the water. So the aquatic life in the uh, creek is not very good. Plus, it's dirty and it's trashy. And all this stuff is flowing out into the ocean. Again, Southeast Asia is a hot spot where a lot of the plastics in the rivers end up in the ocean. We go to Indonesia. We go to the, country, the uh, island of Java, which is the most populous uh, um island in Indonesia. And here's another example in a bay. All the plastics just sitting in the bay, washing out in the ocean. Again, this is a worldwide problem, but two-thirds of the plastics dumping into the ocean is coming out of Asia. Uh, something to think about, here's a picture of a river in India, and you've got children in the water, uh, bathing and playing in the water in a debris field. So again, humans produce a lot of plastics. It's estimated that humans produce about 300 million tons of plastics a year. Eight million tons of this ends up in the oceans. Two or three million of that comes directly from the rivers. So you can literally go around the world and you can see plastics in all oceans. And you can see plastics along the shoreline of all oceans. Long a uh, desolate spot on the African coast. You would think in Africa, there aren't that many people that live on, in, on the coast in Africa. Look at the pollution. Pretty sorry state. So how much plastic is in the ocean? Well, we know Americans and Euro Europeans use about 100 kilograms of plastic per person per year. Asians use far less, only about a fifth as much 
plastic as Americans and Europeans. Africans use a lot less, about three and a half kilograms of plastic per person per year. But a share of this 300 million tons of plastic that we produce on the planet, about 8 million uh, tons ends up in the ocean. And that plastic accumulates in the ocean. Some of it floats. Here's a clump of plastics in the ocean, a very common sight. And it usually stays there for a long time. And that's because plastics are durable and long-lasting. Plastics longevity make it very bad for the environment. You're talking about hundreds of years to break down some pieces of plastic that enter the ocean. Thus, if you were a scuba diver in an area uh, where the a uh, lot of uh, aquatic life and you happen to go down onto a reef, anytime you look up, you might see a clump of plastic. So we're looking at we're below a clump of plastic that's floating on the surface of the ocean here in this picture. And you see the plastic, and it's going to be floating on that ocean for a long time. Now, plastics do break down, but they don't break down fast enough to be considered harmless in the ocean. How do plastics break down? Well, first of all, a lot of plastics are photodegradable. They break down into smaller pieces when they're exposed to sunlight. Now, there's a problem with this in the ocean. Uh, the warmer it is, the more sunlight there is, the faster plastics break down. But when we compare the ocean to land, temperatures in the ocean are lower than they are over the land. So plastics would break down slower. So plastics break down much slower once they've entered the ocean. And again, plastics break down from large into smaller pieces over time. And you end up with a lot of little pellets that you can go in and basically strain out of the ocean in areas of the world. Now, the problem with these pellets are there's a lot of marine animals that don't know the difference between these plastic pellets and food. They ingest these pellets. They can make the animal sick. They can hurt the animal's immune system. And if they ingest too many of these pellets, it will actually kill the animal. So as we talk about the breakdown products of plastic, even though the plastics in the ocean are breaking down, they're breaking down slowly. We add plastics to the oceans at a rate that is much faster than breakdown. Thus, we get a net accumulation of plastics in the ocean every year. Plastics generally float on the surface of the ocean or they're suspended in water. Eventually a lot of these plastics float with the currents and end up on beaches around the world. So that in many places of the world you can go to a beach or a coastal area and you can see some plastics accumulating. I believe this picture is in the United Kingdom. You look at a little closer at this debris field, you can see that most of it is plastic. And as you would suspect, a lot of it's along the coast, is accumulated along the coast in Southeast Asia. But the thing that's pretty amazing is that you'll see plastic pollution on many, many beaches in the world. Iceland, which is not, which is way out of the norm. Here's a beach in Iceland, coastline in Iceland, and you've got plastic debris that's washed up on the coast. I can guarantee you that very little of this plastic, if any of it's from Iceland, it could have floated from New York City, it could have floated from Northern Africa, but you're seeing plastic debris washing up on the coastline all over the world. What's the impact of this on species. Well, if we take a look at the, <clears throat> excuse me, the scientific uh, data research base, at least 267 different marine species have been documented to suffer from ingestion or entanglement with plastics. 
uh, this literature review uh, came from Greenpeace. They put it together, uh, took the scientific uh, information together, and uh, pr produced a report that documented the 267 species that we know of that are at least adversely impacted by plastics. Plastics are found in significant quantities in all oceans. Based on uh, the accumulated scientific record, lots of different species can be harmed by plastic in the ocean. A lot of documented cases about seabirds, uh, sea turtles, seals, sea lions, whales, and all kinds of fish species. You can go into the internet and see a lot of pictures that, um, you know, not very good. Here's a seal entangled in plastic debris. Here's a sea turtle wrapped in plastic wrap. This next picture shows a harvested fish that was cut open and look at all the little particles of plastic that was inside the fish. Probably even a more stunning picture would be this pile of plastic and bones. Uh, this picture was taken on Midway Island in the uh, Central Pacific. Here we had a bird that was ingesting plastic, thinking the plastic pellets were food. Plastic pellets probably killed the bird. And uh, all that you see that are remains are the plastic pellets and some of the bird bones. So we think it's uh, probably the bird was killed by the plastics because if it were a predator, uh, there would the bones would be scattered. Now, one thing that most people are aware of that read the news is that we actually have some accumulation or concentrations of plastic in places in our oceans that are called ocean garbage patches. And uh, we see large volumes of plastic tend to accumulate into what we call these garbage patches. There are currently five recognized large garbage patches, also known as the five Giris. An example, uh, a garbage patch in the Pacific Ocean where we have, you see it, accumulated garbage patches where the uh, orange arrows are, and these garbage patches move around with the currents. So these plastics get caught in the current and they move around in large concentrations. The big five garbage patches in the, on the planet that are well recognized I fit on a map like this. Here's a map of the world, and you see uh, five circles. The circles are kind of broken up because they're really arrows. Uh, here in the P North Pacific garbage patch, the garbage patch moves around based on the current. You can see arrows associated with these. So we have five major garbage patches that are identified now. These garbage patches are in the Pacific the Atlantic, and the Indian Oceans. These garbage patches are getting larger and larger. Of these five garbage patches, the largest is known as the Great Pacific Garbage Patch. It's in the Pacific Ocean, floating around between Japan and North America, following the currents. The highest plastic concentration in a stretch is between California and Hawaii. It's estimated that this Great Pacific Garbage Patch has approximately 480,000 pieces of plastic per square kilometer that the garbage patch covers. Now, if you go to the root of the real problem, Again, we're producing 300 million tons of plastic a year, and about, about 8 million tons is actually getting into the ocean. On a percentage basis, that's not very much.
but on a quantity basis, it's a killer for the oceans. Single-use plastics are the real problem. Plastics and polystyrene, or styrofoam, comprise 90% of all the marine debris right now. And the most common items are food and beverage containers that get loose from the land, end up in the ocean, and they just stay there. There's no place else for them to go. A few years ago, there was a major beach cleanup. And uh, this cleanup documented how much they found on about a five-mile stretch of beach. And if you look at the, uh, the debris that was found, uh, it was pretty shocking. So this major beach cleanup found, finding showed that in this several mile stretch of the beach, people that picked things up found 52,000 plastic grocery bags, 4,300,000 plastic lids, such as, you know, take out coffee cups, over 4,000 plastic straws and stirrers. Now, uh, if you live in an activist part of, an activist part of the United States, you have seen that some states and cities have tried to reduce the pollution from these three plastic things. For instance, um, I was in Seattle a couple weeks ago and I went to a bookstore and I bought a couple books and they gave me a paper bag. I asked them for a plastic bag and they said, well, we don't give plastic bags in Seattle. Uh, that's kind of frustrating to a consumer because it was a rainy day and I wanted to keep my books dry. And they said, well, you should have brought a book bag or you should have, should have brought your own plastic. Also, uh, all of a sudden, you have seen some states and some communities uh, ban the use of plastic straws. Primarily because they could end up in the ocean. So uh, in this major beach cleanup, we see we can quantify huge numbers. In addition to the plastic grocery bags, the plastic lids, the plastic straws, uh, this cleanup produced uh, 3,400 glass beverage bottles, almost 2 million cigarette butts, and a million and a half plastic bottle beverages. That's not all they found. They found about 800,000 plastic bottle caps and about 700,000 food wrappers. A tremendous amount of stuff on this beach. Now people didn't come out and litter all this stuff on the beach. Most of this stuff washed up from the ocean. It was put into the ocean by humans and it washed up on shore. So that just kind of gives you an idea of a magnitude of the plastic that float up on shore uh, from currents. Now plastics are complicated. Uh, when we talk about uh, if you've ever been to a class where you've talked about solid waste disposal, we know that there are many, many different types of plastics made, and uh, not all plastics are equal. So I thought I'd uh, go through our, our major plastic types and uh, the issues with the plastic types. Our major type, another type of plastics we know is DEHP. Uh, we worry about this type of plastic because it has been shown in laboratory studies to be an endocrine disruptor. Basically what an endocrine disruptor here is, it mimics the female hormone estrogen. That can really mess up life cycles of marine animals. DEHP has been banned in Europe since 1999 from use in plastic toys, so it won't harm humans, but it's still used. We have high-density polyethylene, which we call HDPE. It's used in opaque containers, like opaque milk containers, uh, you know, when you buy a gallon of milk, uh, in water and juice containers, in bleach containers, detergent containers, shampoo bottles, garbage bags, yogurt, margarine tubs, cereal box liners. Uh, it's considered a safer plastic, but still you get it out in the ocean. It, it's not linked to human health problems, but you get it out in the ocean and it just stays there forever. So that's not good. 
Well, you know that if you buy a plastic container, if you buy something that's in plastic, you can look at the bottom of that container and you'll see a triangle with a number, usually a number between one and eight. Uh, that kind of uh, infers these different types of plastics. Polyvinyl chloride, uh, known as PVC. Uh, it's used in toys, in clear food, in non-food packaging, things like cling wraps. Uh, some squeeze bottles, shampoo bottles, cooking oil, some peanut butter jars. It's also used in detergent, window cleaner bottles, shower curtains, medical tubing, uh, and in construction projects uh, such as PVC pipes, PVC pi siding. This gets in the ocean and floats around. And one of our concerns with PVC is we consider it a hazardous consumer product. Uh, when it breaks down, as slow as it breaks down, it's an endocrine disruptor that mimics a, fe a female hormone estrogen. So this type of plastic is not very good in the ocean. It's long lasting. It breaks down. It may, uh, it may interfere with aquatic life. We have low density polyethylene, LDPE. It's used in a lot of wraps. Grocery store, dry cleaning, bread wraps, uh, you get a loaf of bread, frozen food bags, most plastic wraps, and squeezable bottle, bottles. As far as uh, it's not uh, an endocrine disruptor or anything like that, so it's considered a safer plastic. But still, it's a long-lasting plastic. We get it in the ocean. It can be part of these debris fields. Uh, it can ensnare marine wildlife. Another type of uh, plastic is the uh, polypropylene, abbreviated on the market as PP. We use it in plastic ketchup bottles and yogurt, and margarine tubs, medicine and syrup bottles. Straws, rubber made products are made out of PP. Uh, baby bottles, it's, con it's considered a safer plastic. And the uh, last type of plastic I wanted to mention are, is polystyrene. The styrofoam containers, egg cartons, disposable cups and bowls, takeout food containers, plastic cultery, and compact disc cases. Uh, these, uh, this type of plastic can leach styrene, which is an endocrine disruptor. It's linked to negative brain and nervous system effects if you have long-term exposure. That's been shown in laboratory animals. So we have all these different types of plastics that end up in the ocean. Some are inert. They don't really do uh, direct harm to marine life. But indirectly, they sure do if, if a marine animal is ensnared in it or the material breaks down enough into pellets and marine animals start eating the pellets thinking it's food. So what can we do about this? This is a worldwide problem. It's more serious in certain parts of the world than in others. So how do we deal with plastics? Some things an individual or government can do is use reusable water bottles. Avoid bottled water, buy a decent water filter, and use a reusable stainless steel water bottle. A lot of Americans do this now, but lots of people still buy bottled water. Now if that bottled water, uh, the, the uh, plastic containers for that bottled water end up in a landfill, or if they're incinerated, the oceans don't have to worry. But remember, a small percentage, or about 8 million tons of plastics a year, are added to the oceans. That means they get out of human control, float down rivers, uh, blow in the air, somehow they end up in the ocean. Other things that an individual can do is to use reusable shopping bags. Keep them in your car, keep them on your bicycle, sickle. Keep them with you so you continue to use them. Uh, they are cheap, they're foldable, 
and you can replace plastic bags, which if they get in the ocean are a hazard. Uh, recently in the news, you've seen some communities that have banned plastic straws. We use about half a billion straws every day in the United States. People say, well, there are some people that really need a straw uh, to consume their liquid and food. Well, the alternative is buy a stainless steel straw that you carry with you and reuse. Other things individuals can do, say no to plastic coffee or tea cups. Carry a reu reusable coffee cup with you and have your coffee dispensed into that reusable cup. We have option options that are not plastic. We can use silicon, we can use bamboo, we can use glass cups and reuse them. As you saw that beach cleanup uh, story that listed the different types of plastics found, uh, a lot of those plastics are disposables. Slow down. You don't have to have everything take out that's put in a plastic container. Plan your meals. Reduce the use of plastic knives, forks, and spoons, plastic plates, plastic packaging. And then, of course, if you do use them, recycle them when possible. If you recycle them, they don't get into the ocean. One thing that a lot of beach communities are promoting right now is spend your first three minutes at the beach cleaning it up. Then enjoy the beach for the whole day. If you go to the beach, help clean it up. Just spend three minutes to pick up trash to make the beach a better place and then enjoy your other two to ten hours at the beach during the day. A three-minute pickup by every person would help purge plastic from the beaches and make the environment that much more pleasant. If we look at some of the uh, how fast things actually break down, we haven't talked about that yet. Uh, foam plastic cups break down in about 50 years. Plastic beverage holders it takes about 400 years to break down, depending on the environment it's left in. Disposable diapers made with plastics take about 450 years to break down. Hopefully they went to a landfill or they went to an incinerator so they don't become part of the ocean plastic stream. Plastic bottles take about 450 years. Fishing line, 600 years. And there's an awful lot of it out there in the ocean. I'd like to close uh, by just showing you a picture. Uh, Game of Thrones has been a big popular uh, culture uh, television program in the last few years. And uh, before the Game of Thrones, the only dragon that we really knew on this planet was the Komodo dragon that's found on the on Komodo Island in Indonesia. Well, Komodo Island, which is famous for its dragons, is also famous for the trash piles of plastic that have piled up on its beaches. Not None of that's produced on Komodo Island. It's coming from other populous areas and other rivers in Southeast Asia. And here you have this isolated island that's basically in clo in you know encased in a pl in plastic wrap basically so plastics in the ocean is a big issue right now it adversely affects marine wildlife uh, if you if you get these really small pieces of plastic taken up by small organisms in the ocean it can deter their growth it can harm them and it can even kill them and in effect, you could be disrupting the food webs and the food chains in the oceans. Uh, plastic pollution in the ocean is um, a well-developed issue right now. A lot of the public is aware of it, but little action is occurring on a global basis to try and mitigate what's happened with plastics. Thank you for your attention. Let's look at some of them. Um, one is what we call the PET plastics, the polyethylene tetra 
phthalate. We use these in soft drink plastic bottles, in juice boxes, in juice bottles. Uh, they're the uh, containers for uh, water that we buy in the store, for beer, for mouthwash, peanut butter, salad dressing, detergent. So they're pretty ubiquitous. We use them all the time. Uh, these plastics, first of all, they don't break down fast. Uh, they can leach some chemicals. They've been shown to leach things like antimony trioxide and DEHP.